tune on to pull the reviews to do for you. Yay! I'm so excited. First book I'm going to be talking about today is Anna and the Swallow Man. First, I'd like to thank Penguin Random House Australia for sending this to me to review. I highly appreciate it and thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. It was such a lovely, cute read. It's 1989 and Anna is seven years old. Now, based around the World War II times, Anna's father is taken by the Germans. And that leaves Anna all by herself, like all alone. She has nowhere to go, so she's on the streets. And that is when she meets the Swallow Man. He is described as tall and mysterious and speaks just as many languages as she does. This Anna girl, let me just say, she's pretty smart for a 70 year old. She knows like five languages. Having not known him before, and plus having no one left, Anna ends up following this man. And the journey the two take together is just beautiful. And that is where the story begins. This book reminded me a lot of the book face, just in terms of like having a young girl, you know, that's like amazed with the world and loves adventures and also grows to become close to an older man. It's kind of like a grandfather figure to her or dad figure to her. And it really, really hooked me because of that reason. This book was written just so beautifully. I felt like I would say with the characters, I felt like Oh my god, the next door neighbor is just looking. It may just have a little bit of wonder and just a little bit of childhood joy when you read it. I was really enjoying the way Anna told the story. It's a very highly descriptive book, a bit like Book Thief. The mystery behind who this guy is and the way Anna goes on this journey with him and how she just trusts him and the little things going on inside her head. It's very, very interesting. One of the great things is it is set in World War II, so you get that going on in the background. However, a bad thing is I would have liked to see a bit more of the war involved in it. I felt like we didn't really dive into it as much as I would have liked and it was a bit of a slow book. And sometimes I thought, can we hurry things up a little bit? 20 pages in, I wasn't digging this book. 30 pages in, I was a bit like, mm. So it kind of was a bit slow for me to up to. But once I did, and once I kind of understand the way that the author had written the story, I got hooked on it. It was a bit confusing as well, the type of genre that it fits into, because it's kind of told from the perspective of a seven year old, marked as literary read, and also a YA book. It was very kind of confusing. I didn't know where to quite it. Overall, it's a story of love, of hope, it's got language, and it's just really inspiring, and I really loved it. So thank you so much for sending this to me. Highly appreciate it. And if you see this out in bookstores, make sure to give it a go, and just tell me what you think about it. <laughs> Next book, I'd really love to thank my good booktubing friend, Benjamino of Home. Uh, he started his own publishing company and it's called Off Terms Publishing and he sent me this book. It's by Esther Del Seno and it's Gabriel and the Swallows. This word's appearing a lot today in everything that I'm talking about. Isn't this cover just absolutely gorgeous? When I saw this cover, I just, I knew it was a book that I just had to read, okay? Because the cover's just freaking amazing. I'll let you get across the look at that. Look at that, look at that. This is book one out of two books in the Volatile Georgie. This story is beautifully written and crafted. It's set in Italy and basically you see this boy's life as he grows up. You see him as a little boy, you see him from school, you see him through university. When Gabriel's a young boy, he ends up meeting a girl that's part human and part bird. This ends up changing his life forever. This book is also magical as well as Gabriel is thrust into the world of what lives beneath the city. And also who is the dark one? Gabriel has this like huge, huge, huge imagination. And sometimes you're left wondering, is he making it up? or is what he's thinking actually real? It was very, very good that way. I love how this book is set in Europe. It's set in Italy, which was just so refreshing for me because sometimes I really get annoyed and I'll talk about it more in my YA has got a change talk that books are always tend to be set in America in a high school. And for once it was just not. And I was just, I was just saying, yes. The main character is really inspiring. He lives for his dreams. He goes after what he believes in. And at the same time, I found it really upsetting for him because he gets bullied constantly because his mother's disabled. And as a real outcast and treated like an outcast by everyone and I felt so sorry for him because he was such a sweet boy. It really is also a magical book and I loved all the characters in it. I felt I was really getting so immersed in the storyline and so immersed with every single one of these characters that I felt like I knew them and they grew on me so so well. The author did a wonderful job of bringing characters to life and it had a lot of the themes in it like love and friendship and also just a little bit of tragedy. For Anna I would rate this book probably out of 10. I think I have to give it 
an 8 out of 10. For Gabriel, I would have to rate that probably a 8 out of 10 as well. Both are really beautiful, beautiful, beautiful books and I don't want to spoil them for you so make sure that you go read them all. I'll leave a link down below as to where you can find them. Thank you so much to those two publishing companies for sending me those books and me being able to talk about them in this review today. I'm Miranda, thank you so much for watching. See ya!